Okay, good morning to you all. It's Wednesday, hump day, uh, and it's cold out here. Cold and humid and dreary and miserable. After that big storm front blew through yesterday, brought uh, tornadoes uh, all through the southern Texas area. Oh, it's getting real. It's blowing straight in on my floor. I'm gonna close my door. I'm getting wet in here. It's coming down, kids. Woo! Time to shut the door. Just left the cold behind. So we're gonna have a couple of cold days here. I think by tomorrow we're supposed to be warmed back up. Uh, it's cold right now though. Woo! And I couldn't lay my hands on my uh, uh, held air and dry gloves. They offer me a little bit more uh, wind protection than these uh, <laughs> Olympia mesh gloves. So my fingers are gonna be cold today. It's like 44, 46 out here right now. And very, very humid. So, anywho, I'm uh, rocking the PCX 150 for my work commute today. Uh, I'm gonna put a few shakedown miles on it, make sure everything is happy uh, before I take it out on an extended road trip this weekend up to the Northeast Texas area. We, uh, we had tentatively uh, thought of staying at the uh, Martin Dyes Jr. State Park uh, up in the Northeast part of Texas, but we're not sure if that's gonna hold or not uh, because it looks like we're gonna get another good soaking on Saturday up there in that area. So uh, we've got a couple of text messages that are kicking around between us right now trying to figure out, is there an alternate location that might be better? Uh, so we'll really just have to look at the forecasts and see uh, where most of the rain is gonna hit. I looked at it a couple days ago and it said that the, for, you know, the chances on Saturday most of the day through the day uh, and into Sunday morning, uh, it was like 40 to 60 percent chance, and now I think that has increased a bit. So, overnight temperatures aren't going to be too bad. Uh, daytime temps will be in the it was mid 60s, nighttime lows were in the low 50s, something like that. So, not bad, but yeah, when it's cold and soggy, wet, and yeah, it just makes it kind of miserable. We shall see. I'll go out and do it anyway. I don't care. I don't mind going out and suffering in the cold. Within reason. <laughs> I still haven't gone out to do my uh, cold weather camping, uh, hammock camping that I had discussed. I might still do that. I don't know. Still have some of the uh, winter to go here in southern Texas. Oh, I forgot to stop and get fuel this morning. Oh, I've got enough. I was going to top it off and uh, do my mileage stats uh, again today for my commute, but nah, I'm not worried about it. Um, this thing has been sitting a while, so you run into a lot of uh, fuel evaporation when you've been sitting for several months, so it skews your uh, fuel economy uh, calculations when you go divide gallons by miles uh, on your refill because you're going to lose a little bit. So, rear tire feels good. Uh, I changed this uh, day before yesterday. Run through the leaves. Yeah, I didn't even stir them. Um, the tire change is pretty uneventful on these bikes. I mean, it, it's it's a little bit of a pain on most scooters because you have to remove the exhaust and the right swing arm support bracket, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's not that hard. I mean, it's just a little bit time consuming because of all the, the extra steps involved. Um, I had someone ask me a question uh, whether the uh, Cub or the PCX is easier or harder or whatever to uh, change the, the tire on. And it it comes down to about the same really you've just got different levels of effort in different areas so on the scooter like i said you have to remove the exhaust the uh, swing arm support plate and the shock mounting bolt lower shock bolt 
not really that hard. Uh, the fender can get in the way sometimes depending on your scoot, so you might have to remove a couple more uh, little fasteners there, so it's not really that big a deal. But for all practical purposes, the wheel just slides off of one side of the, uh, the rear drive, uh, the axle, and uh, you don't have to worry about alignment or chain or any of that nonsense. That's on the other side, you know, the belt's on the other, other side under the CVT cover. So, pretty straightforward. With uh, the Super Cub, for example, and most chain-driven motorcycles, you may or may not have to remove the exhaust, depending on what tools you have on hand. Uh, the Super Cub gives you just enough room to get in there to the uh, axle nut uh, to hold it still, and then you can pull the axle out from the left side. Uh, but it's very close uh, clearance, like you know, half an inch. It's pretty tight. In fact, there's a little divot. There's a cutout uh, in the exhaust uh, to clear the rear axle bolt so once you pull that out then you've got to mess with the chain you know getting your hands all goopy nasty with uh you know chain goo and then fiddling with the uh rear wheel alignment uh and chain slack after you uh change out your tire put your wheel back on so it you know you got a few more little steps on that side a little bit more mess maybe on the uh super cub side but all in all it's a pretty straightforward proposal on both machines Oof, man it's chilly my fingers are getting freeze-dried. Oh, that rear tire's still a little bit greasy. Felt it slip out when I applied the power. Gotta scrub the shipping goo off of these things. The release agents. So what else is going on um, as far as the scooter and uh, cannonball prep? I guess that I can talk about that a little bit. Nothing. <laughs> I've, I've done absolutely butkus for uh, planning and uh, prep so far, uh, other than just making sure the, uh, you know, the, the scoot is in good mechanical shape. So um, I need to go through and do my valve adjustment on this thing before the uh, cannonball in June. Uh, not looking forward to that. It's always a pain in the butt on these things because you have to remove so many plastics to get in there to the top of the engine. Um, I'll video that process and throw the video out here on uh, YouTube when I get to it. Um, so yeah, valve clearance adjustment, check, whatever. Uh, last time I checked it, it was fine. Uh, I need to change my uh, antifreeze. It hasn't been done in a couple years, so it's about time. It doesn't take much. You know, it's, I don't want to say, not even a quart. It's real, not, not very much uh, fluid in this thing at all. I think it's like 0.6 or 0.7, something like that. Um, what else? Tires. I need to get at least one, maybe two more rear tires to take with me on the trip. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if I will be carrying those with me or have them shipped to location or maybe uh, put them on the tire truck, you know, the support truck, something like that. I don't know. Providing I don't have any blowouts, I think I can do the whole trip in one tire. The City Grip original city grip just you know city grip not city grip 2 uh, that I had on the back of here I had 6,000 plus miles on it almost 6,500 miles I think and it still looked new uh, it had lots and lots of tread uh, the only reason it had to come off was because of that triple puncture that I had uh, on my return trip many months ago uh, out on Beltway 8 up here uh, picked up something nasty in the road and there were three holes in this tire two real close to each other and then one a little bit offset from that so uh, I patched it but it wasn't holding and it just wasn't worth the effort or the the risk you know to have a flat tire so I ended up uh, getting this new one and putting it on there so I think that I could do my 8,000 mile cannonball trip on one tire very likely it'll be pretty bald and definitely ready to be replaced when i get finished but you know so i'll have at least one with me as a spare you know for emergencies or consumption my camera gear and the electronics uh i'm still thinking about that i mean this thing has a pretty decent stator on it i want to say it's 180 watts close to 200 watts something like that it's not bad so it can power electronics and you know 
moderate drain devices without any trouble. Uh, I don't think I'd want to power uh, heated gear off of this thing, but otherwise it does all right. And then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put power in the back, power up here in the front somewhere to power my GPS and the cameras and all that. Uh, I don't know if I'll do my live streaming rig or not. Uh, as I've mentioned a few times lately, my my work and money is a little bit tight, uh, tighter than normal. So I'm trying to avoid extra expenditures and uh, especially recurring fees, you know, like signing up two or three different additional mobile carriers. So we'll see. I think it'd be really cool because nobody else is doing that. Hey, check out the plane. Nice. Uh, I think it'd be really cool because no one else is doing that kind of streaming, but uh, I don't know. It just depends on how difficult the logistics and the costs are going to be. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to my uh, Wednesday in progress. It's just about the end of the workday. Uh, I'm leaving my client site and headed over to the warehouse to uh, pick up a couple of things that sold on eBay. So I've got to box them up, get them ready to send out. And uh, I think tomorrow I've got some work stacked up, but I'm going to try to take the latter half of the day off and uh, make sure I've got all my ducks in a row as far as uh, bike prep and packing my camping gear and all that so I'll be ready for Friday morning uh, two of the guys are coming to my house uh, Adrian and uh, Alan will be uh, meeting me at my house sometime early ish on Friday morning probably you know 8 30 9 o'clock something like that we'll try to hit the road uh, no later than about 10 a.m. Uh, late enough that we miss the rush hour traffic but not so late that uh, we take too long to get to our destination up there in uh, near, near Jasper, Texas. So, anybody that wants to join in, you are welcome to join. Uh, we will be arriving sometime late afternoon at uh, Martin Dyes Jr. State Park up in Jasper. Uh, so if you're interested, hit me up here uh, with a, a comment, uh, or you can join into my uh, Discord server, and uh, we can message directly over there, or you can hit me on Instagram. Uh, or email me at quasimotard at gmail.com. And uh, you're welcome to join us uh, or just, you know, find us out there. <laughs> Meet us. <laughs> uh, we plan to be there better half of the afternoon uh, on Friday, all day Saturday, and then leaving Sunday morning. Uh, we don't know how the weather is going to be. It looks like uh, the forecast is kind of up and down. Uh, it looks like a pretty strong chance of rain throughout uh late Saturday afternoon, evening range all night long uh, into Sunday morning and then it's looking like it might calm down a little bit early-ish, you know, 9, 10 in the morning on Sunday, but then later in the afternoon it looks like there's more rain so if that forecast holds true it'll be soggy that means camping in the rain and definitely riding in the rain to get back home, but that's okay motorcycle trip's not a motorcycle trip without some rain, right?